Thank you. Uh, well, this is one of those cases you actually have choices. So thanks uh, uh, for being here. This is joint work with uh, Jeremy Greenwood and Ricardo Marto, who is uh, Marto, who is in the audience. Uh, what do we do in this paper? Well, um, over the course of the 20th century, uh, household and family structure in the US changed dramatically. There are several facts. Uh, we are all familiar with these. Fertility decline, educational attainment increase, people work much less at home and uh, enjoy more leisure. Uh, there has been a shift in jobs from blue to white color uh, jobs. And then at the same time, uh, the fraction of people who are married decline. And these trends also show in the cross country data if you rank the countries by GDP per capita. Now in this paper, we follow the footsteps of Kuznets and many others that follow uh, Kuznets. Uh, we will first document uh, facts for fam what we call facts for family economics and then interpret those facts through the lens of a quantitative model and decompose the driving forces, okay? The facts we are after, I can click these in the discussion if anybody is interested is, you know, we well known decline in work effort at home and in the market, decline in fertility, decline in marriage, as a result decline in household size, the rise in educational attainment and the shift from uh, occupational structure. Now, uh, this will be a model of time allocation and marriage decisions very simple. Uh, so there will be two types of households, married and single. Married people can have children. Singles only decide on time allocations, home, market, leisure. And married people decide on time allocations, plus they decide how many children to have and how much to educate them. As you can see, there will be a quality quantity trade-off there. And here, uh, E is education, BK is the basic child care. Now, uh, Inputs for home production are time and uh, things you buy from the market. D is for durables and the home time includes parents' time plus some help from children. That's the Kai K term. People care about market consumption, C, uh, home production and leisure. These are singles. Married people care exactly the same objects with some economies of scale, that's epsilon. And number of children and the quality of children. I will comment the quality of children in a second. You solve this time allocation problems uh, and you get value of being single and value of being married. And then people draw some uh, match quality of their marriage and they decide whether to get married or not. Extremely straightforward. Now, each adult has one unit of time or one talent, one unit of talent, let's say, and that comes a fraction of brain and fraction of brown. How much fraction of brain and brown you have depends on what parents did with you. So that depends on education. So if you have high, lots of education, then you have a high amount of brain. And then there will be an equilibrium price of this brain and brown that defines your per hour wage. This is this W. Then we can define the budget constraints for single and married, where P is gonna be the relative price of these uh, durables that you have to buy. Now, these, price, these skill prices are going to be determined by a standard CS production function, where, where bold U and V are aggregate amounts of skilled and unskilled labor, and where, you, where we are going to have a neutral technological progress, that's Z, a skill-biased technological progress, that's X, and on top of these two changes, the price of durables are going to also decline over time. So these are going to be the three changes in the, uh, in the economy, okay? So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to estimate the model matching two points in the US history, 1880 and 2020. Most of the parameters we can identify using straightforward uh, first order conditions and quantities that we observe. Then we are going to construct a sequence of steady state and see how we go from, one, from 1880 to 2020, focusing on these driving forces. Before we go, Further, let me give you one takeaway take from this analysis is this model will allow us to calculate what's the value of home production, okay? We can do that through the wages, value of household time, or through prices, where we look at the value of household consumption. And here I report the value of home production uh, relative to measured GDP. In 1880, this was about as big as GDP, numbers are around one. And in 2020, depending on the measurement, it declined to about 30 to 60% of GDP. So that's, that's what we get. Now, 
this is the match of the model with respect to you know fertility schooling and the marriage you see there's this hump shape in marriage remember we only target the parameters to match the two endpoints then now i go to my counterfactual i say okay now suppose some of these technological changes didn't take place what would happen and i report here if uh, for each outcome i report three alternative outcomes if there was no skilled bias technological change that's the blue if there was no change in aggregate uh, natural productivity or this price of durables did not decline. But this picture shows you that to understand fertility and schooling, it's key to get the skill bias technological change. That, that's driving everything in this respect in the model. For the home hours, and what is key is durables, because if the, if the price of durables did not decline, people would work even more at home because they are getting richer and they want to consume more home goods as well, and it takes time. And if, uh, and if, the, if there was no technological progress, that's, that's going to kill lots of income effect, and people would work even more. Okay, so you, you see that here. And finally, how do we get this? How does the model deliver this hump shape? Basically, for marriage decision, this is the fraction of people married, there are two forces. On the one hand, this skill bias technological change makes the children more valuable. So it's, it's good to have children and educate them. So there's that's, that aspect. And uh, because the wages are going up and, and you like that. On the other hand, you know, home production is becoming less and less valuable. In this model, having two people is more valuable than having one people. And in the beginning, the first force dominate, then the second force dominate, and that's what we get, to get the hump. So let me conclude. We are focusing on the transition in the family structure in the US, but as I said, these facts we document hold in the cross, uh, the cross country evidence, and we focus on three forces, and these forces seem to speak to different parts of the data. And we have, uh, well, Ricardo prepared a nice uh, web page where you can uh, check our data and you can even run our quantitative uh, experiments. I encourage you to go there as well. Okay, let me end here. Thank you very much, Nazir. That was great. If anyone has any questions, would you like to raise the little yellow virtual hand for all the comments in the in the chat being addressed. Jonas, do you have anything else to ask? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm still trying to kind of uh, process some of the results, so <laughs> I might be a bit slow, but so one thing I was wondering, so in the, the stylized facts you showed, I, uh, and that kind of relates to one of my questions I had, is it seems there's missing something on, on like longevity and like how long people live, how long they spend in the labor market. So Ricardo already take off care of some of these questions. I wonder if there are any other questions. People can just uh, uh, can just uh, go ahead and ask. Uh, and if there are no other questions, I'm happy to show you the facts that we have been uh, kind of uh, looking at. So I'm at your service, the audience. So did my get question get through or no? It seems like no. I, I heard your question, Jonas. I don't know if Nezi heard Sorry? it. Uh, I don't uh, hear you, Ricardo. Or is it me? Uh, anyway, I think I can, I can address that if uh, if Nezi is still solving the the mic issue. So, in one of the the first fact that we doc document the decline of the work effort, we also look at. Uh, trends in retirement within the U.S. and across the U.S. So what we see is that there's this trend for early retirement that has been happening in, in the U.S. across different age, uh, age groups, but also in several other, other, um, other advanced economies. Now, that's partially related with uh, the story of longevity. Okay. So a lot of people are Sorry, well, I, was, longer and... I wasn't hearing anything. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, feel free to repeat it, Jonas. No, 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 no. You go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I did my job of presentation. You take care of the answers. Yes. Well, I think I pretty much okay. give the idea of the okay. uh, and trend just in a clarification. retirement. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just a clarification. So in, in the end, you showed this, or like, I don't know, the fifth 
side or something, you showed them the marriage pattern and yep. the one you you get from the mod. So I was surprised by this because I mean, marriage in your model, it doesn't, it's not like actual marriage in the data, right? It's, it's just having a partner, right? Well, this is basically, this tells you the differential value of being a single and a being married. No, this is all there is. So this tells you how, because in the model, it's a static, static model. No, you there's the value of marriage and value of being single. So it basically comes, uh, the value of marriage comes from solutions to these two maximization problems, okay? And then there's a distribution of shocks and some, and then this is basically uh, depends how this, this gap evolves over time. And in this gap, basically, there are two forces. Why that, that can be a hump? So because this, this, yeah. this, this, this difference doesn't move monotonically. That's all there is. This, this, sorry, this was clear. So I, what I meant is when you, when you match that to the data, yep. I was wondering whether you take marriage rates or whether you take uh, rates of people in relationships, because this seems to be oh. what your marriage in the model is capturing. And I was just surprised that was 20% because it seemed very low. I think uh, we also did uh, uh, taking into account cohabitation. Obviously, it doesn't make much of a difference until the very end, and it goes a little bit up. I mean, so we could recalibrate everything for the 2020 taking uh, with cohabitation, but we haven't done that. So it's uh, so. There, so you're right that in the sense that this number is low because this is this is actually people who are married, not not yeah. people who are married plus cohabiting. And also the age group point. is important here. This yeah. is uh, people between the age of 20 to 29. So of course, if you look at age groups that are much older, a lot of people yeah. end up Get getting married. married. So because, I mean, you have to make a, you have to take a decision. It's a static model. Where do you, how do you map up to data? And in terms of the marriage, we thought, you know, looking at like 20 to 29 years old is a good, I mean, it kind of captures the spirit of entry into marriage since we don't have the rest of the rest of the parts. So that's a, that's a good point. Right. But okay, then, then on this, so I'm just continuing kind of with my yep. question, but then it seems like this is also a very important fact in the data, right? That the data moment that kind of people marry later or it, uh, marriage doesn't yeah, matter, right? we don't they get children them. way later. And I think, and that's, that's a big, pattern in the data, right? And so I, yes. I think if you if you focus on 20 to 29, it, no, I, we're not going to capture that. See... We're not going to capture that. No, I mean, in the sense that, no. you know, like within this, of course, if you look at these facts, I mean, within this fact, there are several sub facts. No, I mean, in, in the fertility, there's also the decline in the fertility, there's the timing to later years. In the decline in the work effort, there is male versus females. Here we have a kind of, a, you know, we aggregate the husband and wife. So, I mean, what we wanted to capture was some uh, the, the simple facts where we could doc we could document for the longest period for the U.S. and uh, have the stylized model to capture that, so that we could identify, you know, really these three forces in a kind of a clean and sharp way. So it's kind of a, we are playing a particular game. I mean, if I think we if we want to like, for example, yesterday's paper on. Uh, gender gaps, which was using a more detailed data for that's a different kind of uh, you know focus. Or here we want to focus on the big uh, big picture questions, uh, uh, big picture patterns. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then uh, going back to here, if we'll in the marriage, as we as uh, Ricardo already said, you see we have fraction never married. Of course, we are matching the reverse of that, okay, the, the picture. And you see, if you take the less cohabitation, it's kind of, that's, that's what we are missing, okay? So it's kind of here 80%, never married, 20% uh, married, and we are kind of uh, missing maybe some chunk here. 